I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're at the National Muzzleloading Rifle Association visiting with my friend Ben Query, the chairman of the National Muzzleloading Rifle Association Gunmakers Hall, to hear a little bit about Gunmakers Hall and the core of traditional American crafts at the National Muzzleloading Rifle Association. I'm Benjamin Query. I'm the National Muzzleloading Rifle Association Gunmakers Hall Chairman. I kind of organized the show here, and the show is muzzleloaders, uh, contemporary arms uh, of classic design muzzleloaders, flintlocks, uh, percussion guns, fowlers, shotguns, pistols. We started in 1983 with a booth over on Commercial Row a group of contemporary makers, uh, Lou Sanchez, Mark Silver, John Bivens, started a booth to display these firearms. Uh, they basically had no place else to display the really finely made uh, contemporary arms. That booth was so successful that evo it evolved into that committee actually buying this structure in Ohio, which is a, we believe, 1820s era log structure. Um, that was falling apart, wasn't chinked or anything. You may have seen pictures of cabins out in the middle of nowhere that are falling down. Well, they got a really good deal on it, trucked the logs over here, and that same group of guys, uh, Bill Trigger, Mark Silver, some other guys, erected this structure. And then uh, did all the, the chinking, put it all up themselves, uh, and basically had it here from the NMLRA, on the NMLRA grounds. They built an upstairs loft uh, for the purpose of photographing and documenting contemporary arms and comparing them to originals and uh, you know basically doing here's the original a really good photograph spread and then here's the contemporary arm and you could yeah. compare the two. Right. We've kept it going since this structure was built. There's actually uh, a list of the guys and the original Gunmakers Hall uh, committee is there on the top. Houston Harrison and uh, Bob Harn John Bivens, Mark Silver, yeah, yeah. the whole uh, original group. And in one of the things they did as fine gun makers in the tradition of German gun makers of old, they had a shooting match during this, the fall shoot or, and spring shoot. This one's from the first one, June 1987. And as you can see, it's in a classic shoots and style, uh, actually carved wood, it's three dimensional. And uh, they had a match to see which of the gun makers would win this prize. And it's kind of a cool target because in this match, they actually cover the target with, paper, with a sheet of paper. And the bullseye can be anywhere on that disc. So everybody shoots at just a circle, and then they find out after the they mark each shot on another piece of paper, and then they find out who won the match. So there's a, an element of chance in it that makes well, it a little more fun. They were shooting at the bull. Yeah. That, that oh. first one, I think they knew where the bull was. Yeah. In, the, in the 18th century, uh, buying a gun or acquiring a gun was just one piece of the puzzle of survival on the frontier. When you, when you got that muzzleloader, you also needed a horn to carry the powder in, and you needed a knife and possibly a tomahawk or an axe. So you would bring revenue into the entire community that was centered around the gun makers. And one of the things I wanted to do as chairman was to bring those associated trades and crafts into the Gunmakers Hall campus, per se, and uh, show what else happened at that time. In doing so, I got with the Honorable Company of Horners, and they, uh, on their own, their own money, built this cabinet to display some of their finest horn work, contemporary horn work, and also, as in this case, we have a number of original powder horns from the 18th century on display in here, which is just a wonderful gift, and I have to thank Henry Bowman and the Honorable Company of Horners, and all that they've done with this, but it's really cool.
One of the things we do every year at Gunmakers Hall, uh, right from the start, the Gunmakers Hall committee needed that, or knew that the NMLRA needed money, so they started mostly to support this building. They started having a raffle, and uh, one of the makers would build a gun, and they would sell tickets to raffle or have a giveaway per se of that gun. Uh, the very first one, I believe, was in 1987, they raised eighteen thousand dollars which was pretty good. So ever since then, uh, we've been having a giveaway and it's expanded into now we have two guns, a known maker, a contemporary maker that's uh, got a lot of experience and can really build something nice. And the incentive gun, uh, which I'll explain in a minute, is made by a new guy, a new maker that uh, the chairman, myself, will write about the construction of his muzzler in Muzzle Blast Magazine, the magazine of the NMLRA. But it's a great opportunity for a, a new guy, a young maker, an old maker that's new to it, to uh, get a little good PR out there. The way, it's, the way it's drawn, we have the incentive gun and we have the giveaway gun. So first, we uh, sell tickets. If you buy a ticket package, I believe they're $5 each. If you get a pack of 25, they're only $50, so only $2 each. And if you buy that bundle, you're entered into the incentive gun drawing which you win the very first gun made by the new guy. Uh, if you don't win that, it's all put in the pot with the giveaway gun and all the other prizes. So if you buy the $50 package, you get two chances to win. So it's a really pretty good deal. This year we have the incentive gun is made by John Geckel of Ohio. It's a beautiful mid-19th century Ohio style arm. He did all the engraving by hand. It's got a, a Montana barrel and a Davis lock, a uh, fairly old barrel, but you can see some of the inlay work and engraving he did on it, which is quite nice. And the, the incentive gun maker, keep in mind, they don't really get paid very much to do this. We give them a small reimbursement, but it basically just covers the parts. But it is a nice opportunity to uh, get their name out there and get some pictures of their work you know, in muzzle blast and hanging up here, of course. And uh, whoever buys the winning ticket gets to take it home. This year, uh, the giveaway gun, and now here's how this works. You buy 25 tickets, you get a chance to win this gun. If you don't win that gun, those 25 are put right in here. Or you can just buy a $5 ticket and get a single chance to win this gun. This one was made by Mike McHugh another Ohio maker. Uh, it's a Dickert, I believe. Flintlock, of course, set triggers. Very well made. Uh, Mike is a, a master gun maker. So one of his firearms is probably worth more than we'll bring in with the drawing. Very finely made, finely carved. I mean, and, uh, what, what I would call a museum ready copy. It's an exact, uh, I guess, bench copy, some people yeah. would say. But uh, all the, the molding lines that run axially, al axially along the barrel, the pipes and everything is in that maker style. If, if not a copy of an exact gun, some of our builders, and I used to do this, will take uh, a really good book that has good images of an original and try to make as good a copy of that as they can. Uh, the rest of this, uh, this is actually next year's giveaway gun that our builder, Bart Ke Copenhaver, actually finished already. It's a Christian order, uh, not an exact copy, but definitely in the style of Christian order. Uh, Christian order engraved his ends backwards. Interesting. So Bart engraved his ends backwards to match the style of the Christian order. But they think Christian order did it wrong once and he never changed it, so everybody would think he meant to do that. Oh, that's, one, that's one of the theories about it. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the theories why Christian Order did that. But Bart uh, replicated that here, or reproduced it in a way. The barrel has gold bands inlet at the breech and the muzzle. It's got the uh, griffin. I believe that mythical beast is a griffin yes. carving, as Order did with uh, silver inlays and silver toenails on the beast and a silver eye. It's got a silver uh, starburst inlay on the cheek piece, as or order often used, and silver wire inlay throughout the stock. 
and this is Bart's trademark, this little, like, a spade from a deck of cards is uh, this, is Bart, but in the style of Christian order. So this way he gets a little uh, access to his own creativity, but follows in the style of the original maker. And even the, the patina on the barrel is actually a protective uh, process to prevent rust, but it also looks quite good, and it prevents glare when you're out shooting it. And again, this one is a shooter. They're not wall hangers. You, you can hunt with these guns, you can target shoot with these guns. They're made to be used. Uh, along with the giveaway gun, you can buy that $5 ticket and you might win this gun. Well, when they draw and somebody wins the gun, well, now they're drawing for everything else in the giveaway. There's typically quite a few items in there. This year we have a pouch and horn donated by Ron Hess from Georgia as one of our prizes. We have another bag by Jeff Luke, uh, who makes wonderful historically correct bags. You can follow him on Instagram, uh, po Boy Leather. Uh, both Ron Hess and Jeff Luke donate pretty much every year. Every year I've been chairman, Jeff has donated. He actually came to me when I became chairman and asked if I would like a donation. And I was like, you're on the team. <laughs> But, but the guys have been great. They always donate something. We have a knife by uh, Ron Yeren, who has been great. He's been donating knives for several years now. And what's really great is he's teaching young people how to do this. This one's actually made, I believe, from a saw blade. So it's just a, not a forge knife, but a grind knife. And he kind of a, a apologized for that because he's a real old school blacksmith. But it, it's a beautiful knife and somebody's gonna win it uh, for that. Uh, $5 ticket, you can win that. Along with that is a shooting box by Peter Weigand, which is just a beautiful, take it to the line and store all your stuff in it and keep your round balls from rolling away and place for patches. And every year, Peter makes one of these and uh, donates it to Gunmakers Hall so we can uh, sell tickets, give that away, raise money for the NMLRA, which is you know money outside of memberships. This is money that's... Uh, raised by Gunmakers Hall and the Gunmakers Hall Committee. Uh, Nancy Thelen of Michigan, every single year, donates a handmade quilt. Uh, some of them are fantastic. Uh, all of them are beautiful. And I say fantastic, because she did one for another giveaway that her husband just handed me a few days ago, which is red, white, and blue, and looks like Old Glory in an Amish way, <laughs> if you can imagine that, but it's quite beautiful. and. Uh, I may buy a ticket. I'd like just to get that quilt. Gun schwein, I want the quilt. <laughs> but uh, th this is our wall of giveaway items here. Uh, and so would you say that the, the display, the, the raffles help support the displays as well as some of the educational aspects of gun makers? Absolutely, yeah, there. yeah. Uh, originally it was just for maintenance of the old log structure. But that has evolved into where now we're spending money to make the structure better. Uh, for example, out back is what we call a pavilion, which is just a, a concrete slab with a roof over it. But when it's a little drizzly rainy on a day like this, it gives the guys a, a place to work. And this back porch, originally the structure didn't have the porch on it. Uh, Bill Brockway, a longtime member of the NMLRA, who wrote one of the most popular gun building books, uh, recreating the American Long Rifle, uh, him and John Shumway, and I can't remember the, the third author, but Bill Brockway designed this porch for us and, and got it all floored and taken care of. And as you can see, it's quite popular. This is where we hold the uh, now infamous back porch talks and bring people up to, uh, in a casual way, talk to the crowd. You know, we'll typically have, I think Saturday we had 24 people, Sunday was 15, 18, somewhere in there. But it's a very uh, casual, you know, here, let me show you how to do this, not PowerPoint slides and blah, 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 blah. But, you know, what do you want? How can I help you? Yeah. You know, what can I do to help you with your craft or your trade? You know, and the, the speaker is right here. If it's me, I'm in a rocking chair. <laughs> I, I have, fortunately, I have leukemia and I kind of run out physically. So you'll find me in a rocking chair and often these guys too, just talking and interacting with the crowd and uh, sharing information. It, the, key thing of Gunmakers All is the dissemination of information so we can share this knowledge. Uh, through my career as an engineer and a tool and die maker, I saw so many guys that wouldn't show you little tricks or things and they're just gonna die with that knowledge. 
And so much of that happened at the end of the 19th century with muzzleloaders that in this part of the 21st century, we really want to preserve that knowledge and carry it on to the next generation. None of these guys want to die with what they know and no one else knowing it. They'll give you the shirt off their back and miss their lunch to show you how to sharpen a wood chisel, you know, or, or anything. They're just so open and helping. And I really encourage anybody, when you come to the Walter Klein range, to just come in the gate, swing off to your right, to the old log cabin, which is now beautifully landscaped, thanks, thanks to Mr. Goodman and his landscaping service, and come right in the hall, buy some tickets, and see the display, and then come on back and ask questions, uh, interact with the guys. Like I say, they'll, they'll show you anything, but they're typically uh, carving stocks, engraving metalwork, uh, inlaying barrels. Uh, just earlier this week, we had a, two gentlemen, uh, hand reaming barrels, taking old cruddy barrels and cutting new bores in them. And then we had another guy with a hand-powered rifling machine that basically uses a, a man-made helix and a drawbar and a tiny little cutter and it's pulled through the barrel and that helix generates the rifling that creates all that accuracy. Well, we were doing that by hand. Here. It was real, it was a 19th century machine, but still, you know, that's yeah. similar to how it would have been done in the 18th century, and we're doing it by hand, you know. And the big thing is we're showing people how to do that. And if, you know, if Bill doing that work saw a young man that's like, I'd like to build one of those, he would, he'd be in a nirvonic state. <laughs> he'd, just, he'd be in rapture. <laughs> and, and he's found that. I, I know because I've seen it. There's been a few people that, you know, they had that aha moment and realized they could do this too. It's not rocket science. They were doing this in the 17th and 18th century right here in America. And we, we can do it again. You know, we just have to learn a little about the old ways and then find somebody like these guys to interact with. And that extends, too, to the Gunmakers Hall scholarships. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have three scholarships, and uh, Gunmakers Hall raises all the money for that. Uh, I really want to start pushing that. Uh, it's been uh, not very well known in the past, and I really want to let people know about it because it's not hard to get. If you're a, a young person starting college, I know because my daughter is, uh, you need money <laughs> to books, housing, food, all that adds up. And the NMLRA scholarships, including the Gunmakers Hall Scholarship, is a great way to get some money for that young person starting their, their academic career. It's not hard to apply for. It's on our website. Uh, it's very simple. And I found out two years ago at the membership meeting that one year no one applied for it. So we couldn't give it away. And the next year I believe we had three or four students applied for it for three scholarships. And this, is, to me, is just a travesty. I mean, I'm not that highly an educated man, but part of the reason I'm not, I couldn't afford it. <laughs> but uh, we really need to get that out to the people and let them know that money is there. Uh, it's a simple entry process. It's all on the web. And it's there for the students that are interested in just taking the time to present, in an example of the Gunmakers Hall Scholarship, uh, presenting their own work their craft to give an example of what they do as a, a fairly traditional craftsman and uh, skills and work that they have gleaned over the years and uh, that's judged by our scholarship committee and that person is awarded the money and to me it wouldn't be that hard to just put together a simple portfolio of your work you know and it's it's not that hard to do and it's just a wonderful opportunity to get some money for college Thank you very much. Oh, you're quite welcome. Appreciate you're quite welcome. Any, any final words for anybody um, watching out there? I, I encourage everyone to go to the NMLRA website and learn from that and come to Friendship. Uh, if you can't, at least get involved and share this community because it's a wonderful resource. Um, like I said, I have leukemia and I was talking to a friend of mine and he's like, how do you keep going? Well, physically it's hard, but one of the things that did it a client came to me in February and wanted to know if I could build him a competition gun for sporting clays for the June shoot, 14 weeks away. Well, I typically take around 18 months to build a gun because you saw I build all this, I make all the screws and all this is handmade. I, well, I'll do what I can. So 13 weeks and two days later, I handed him the shotgun. So he had it the, the day before he left to go to Friendship, he's got his new shotgun. And he was ecstatic because it was a, did very well. 
But I told this guy that asked me how I keep going. When he brought me that, pro when that client brought me that project, I realized the only way I could complete it in under 14 weeks was to work every single day. Not a lot, just a little bit, every single day. And uh, because of that muzzle and building that, that gave me that little extra oomph to get out of bed or get off the couch or get out of the doldrums and the dumps, because it can bring you down more than just physically, it can bring you down emotionally. But to have that project driving me to get down there in the shop and, you know, may, maybe I've a few strokes with a file or I fit a hammer or something, just a little, I know one day it was only 20 minutes because I keep in a journal, you know. But every single day I worked on that and that was the happiest 13 weeks of my life I've had in a long time. And I realized, you know, I was a professional engineer for 20 years and you're just driven by projects constantly and you develop, if you don't already have it, which I think a lot of engineers do, you develop that mindset, you have to keep going or you feel some void in your existence, you know. That competition shotgun project gave me that drive, you know, that little you know, a little thing to keep you going. And once I realized that, now I apply that methodology to all my other projects. And, you know, I, I don't know if I have more energy or if I'm just using it more effectively. And, you know, you ask me how I'm doing, and I typically say, well, if I was doing any better, I couldn't stand it. Because I do. It's just, the, the, and it's not just I build guns. It's this community I'm involved with. It's Dennis Pretty, it's Dick Miller, it's Larry Horgan, it's Henry Bowman, it's you, it's Mike Gazel, the president, it's the executive committee, it's the board, it's the membership, every, the range officers, everyone you interact with here is just the most helpful, compassionate individual you will find in shooting sports. And I guess that's my final word. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Ben. You're quite welcome. Thank you. I'd like to thank Ben for taking some time out of his busy schedule during the national championships there to go through Gunmakers Hall and give us a little bit of the history of the hall and the members that make it up and, and really the artists and the craftspeople within it that are keeping these wonderful American crafts going uh, for future generations, really. A lot of these guys are really passionate about seeing this stuff preserved and seeing it handed off to the next generation. So if you're interested in getting involved in the National Muzzleloading Rifle Association Gunmakers Hall, reach out to Ben. We'll have contact information in the video description for you to check out if you want to get involved or learn a little bit more. If you are wanting to apply for these scholarships that come through Gunmakers Hall here, please do so. They, there are years that go by where there aren't anybody uh, applying for these scholarships and they want to see folks applying for these scholarships. They want to see these funds used for education and the preservation of these crafts. So I'm going to be hounding you guys. If you've got kids or you yourself are interested, you're at the age where you're looking for scholarships, you need to get on this. I've been talking with Ben about a few other projects that, that we can do to talk a little bit about traditional American crafts during the National Muzzleloading Rifle Association national events here. So I'm excited to bring them to you a little bit more here in 2024 and beyond. Thank you again, Ben, for sharing your time and your knowledge with me. Once again, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.